we are aware that quite a number of parts of the country had, as we speak, not yet been fully connected to reliable and stable internet. As a government, therefore, we have embarked on an ambitious program of rolling out 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable to ensure that those parts of the country that hitherto had not been connected get access to reliable and stable internet. Over the past one year, we have rolled out about 10,000 kilometers. We have now changed the model as opposed to digging down the ground to lay out fiber. We have, we have re-engineered our model through a partnership between our ministry and the Kenya Power and Lighting Company, where we are now going to leverage on the existing infrastructure of the Kenya Power and Lighting Company to roll out the fiber. If we go that route, which is now work in progress, it is our estimation that as opposed to the five years within which we had envisaged to roll out 100,000 kilometers of the fiber, we will now be able to roll out the 100,000 kilometers of fiber within the next two years. <laughs> Eventually, the net effect of this is that each and every location or station where there is power connectivity, we will be able to have in equal measure fiber connectivity. If there is last mile connectivity of electricity, therefore, we equally will be able to have last mile connectivity of fiber in Kenya up to the individual household. In the same vein, we have embarked on the process of rolling out 25,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. Our target in the initial stages is the markets, the bus terminal where our youth are domiciled, and the markets because that is where our mothers and sisters who are involved in itinerary trade are domiciled. We want to leverage on technology good people to change our markets into digital marketplaces. Because in the world of today with technology, we no longer need to have a physical interface between the buyer of a commodity and the consumer of a commodity. We want to leverage on technology for purposes of e-commerce so that we can have virtual transactions within our itinerary trade. And to augment these efforts, recently we have come up with an e-commerce strategy and bill which we are now processing in equal measure. We have come up with a national um, addressing system policy and bill on the basis of which our e-commerce uh, initiatives can be anchored. So we are very clear in our mind that e-commerce will revolutionize the way we undertake our trade activities in this country. The other major program we have embarked on is digital skilling. We are aware that as we roll out the digital infrastructure, there has to be a corresponding or commensurate level of digital skilling among the Kenyan population. And in this regard, we have started by digital skilling for the youth. As we speak, we have deployed devices to a total of 100 and 16 Tibet institutions where we are now undertaking digital skilling for the youth, but in equal measure also, we are connecting the youth to global technological companies for purposes of digital jobs. That is the frontier that we have at our disposal to sort out the unemployment problem that we have in this country, the digital space. There are enormous opportunities available in the digital space for our youth. We are going an extra mile through a partnership with our legislature, working together with our members of parliament, to go now down to the villages and set up digital hubs. We are going to have a digital hub in each and every ward, the lowest administrative unit in this country. We are going to have a digital hub where we are going to undertake digital skilling for the youth. As government, we are going to facilitate the training we are going to deploy the devices. We will facilitate internet connectivity. Of course, the starting point is the fiber connectivity, which is work in progress. But eventually, or cumulatively, or ultimately, our objective is to ensure that right there in the villages, we will have youth who are digitally skilled, who are working for global 
technological companies and are earning in dollars, in dollars over and above other foreign currencies. That is the only way we can sort out the unemployment problem that we have in this country. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves, good people, is if we have that level of digital public infrastructure, as a government, do we still need to run manual processes in government? And the answer is no. That is why we are pursuing digitalization of all government services on one hand and digitization of all government records on the other. When we came into office, we only had 350 services aboard our e-citizen platform. As we speak today, we have got a whopping 16,862 services on our e-citizen platform. The import of this, good people, is that in the not too distant future now, Kenyans will have no rational justification to physically visit government offices to consume government services. This is very much in tandem with what has happened in other jurisdictions. Estonia has done it, we have just listened to it. India has done it, Pakistan has done it. Why should Kenya be an exception? We will facilitate a virtual mechanism of confirming that each and every Kenyan is the person he or she claims to be. And if that happens, again very soon, we should be able to run a paperless government, we should be able to run virtual transactions, and this is the only way as government that we will be able to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of service delivery to the Kenyan public.